Hello, everybody. Thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman. Uh, if this is your first time here, I hope you can get something from my video. And if you are a return viewer, you are obviously a glutton for punishment, and I appreciate that about you. Uh, a couple things before I bring on Laura. Um, folks, uh, I am working on some other videos. They're, they're kind of slow in coming. Um, I'm working on one somebody's been asking for a long time that I do a video on Julie Green's dad. So I'm trying to find some stuff on that. Um, also, I'm doing one on uh, another person. Her name slips me at the moment. Um, and I'm, I'm working on that. And then I also want to work on a video um, with me about why these false prophets are so successful. Uh, I've got a pretty good three page outline as to why it happens the way it happens. Um, but uh, that's not the subject for tonight as far as on my part. We have Laura from Magical Mystery Church, somebody that I have uh, admired their channel, her channel. She just does amazing work. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, her and how she makes that magic happen. Uh, we had a little bit of problem. You know, Laura enjoys her anonymity, so we needed to get past the for lack of a better term, cartoon face. And I think we found a good uh, a good compromise on how to make this work. Let's bring in Laura. There she is, Magical Mystery Hi. Church. There's Laura. How are you doing? Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just, that's priceless. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Very happy to be here. Good. I am glad you're here. I know I was looking in the chat room a lot of people you've got some really 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 uh loyal followers they're talking about how much you've blessed them with your channel Aww. um here's one from krista so excited to see laura uh let's see there's gary and drew Hi, guys. Um, yes uh, this will be excellent cool beans that's just great um so i appreciate you coming on um so uh this this uh live chat is not about um it's really not about me it's about you it's it's the people want to know more about you um and so i want you to just feel free to say whatever you want to say if it's if it's criticism on me or just whatever you this is your time i don't care what you say um okay. i mean that's not to say it doesn't have value i'm just saying it's not going to offend me um, okay. so let's, let's get into it because we've got a lot to talk about and a lot of people want to know a couple things. So first let's, let's start off with you have any kind of opening statement you'd like to make. Um, yeah, I would like to say thank you to all my subscribers and people that watch my videos. Um, doing this and hearing from people that's helped them is why I do it. Like it's, it means so, so much to me. And also hearing from people who've been in the NAR or whatever, or in the new age, and they come out, it gives me like, it gives me so much hope because sometimes you look at all this is happening and it's, it's kind of sad. It makes your kind of breaks your heart and you're like, Oh no. And so when you hear from people, um, their stories and their comments and all that, it just makes you feel like God is definitely working in this and he's definitely leading people out and it does, it just makes you feel hopeful. So I, I appreciate everybody for that and the, thank the Lord for that too. Praise God. All right. Well, we, um, let's see, I'm still learning how to manage this computer program. So if I stall out or zone out, it's just cause I'm overwhelmed. All right. So, um, like I said, again, I appreciate you being here. Um, normally we follow a certain kind of format and we start off with, tell me as much or as little as you want to tell me and the others about your salvation story. Okay. Well, um, I grew up in a very kind of normal Christian, I mean, not Christian, normal American um, childhood, you know, but we didn't really go to church. My mom was formerly Catholic and um, she had come out of the Catholic church. So I believed in God. I believed in Jesus, but I didn't know anything about the Bible. Maybe we went to church a little bit when I was in junior high. And I remember in high school, um, some boys were like walking around with their Bibles and telling everybody they had to be born again, you know? And I was like, you're crazy. Like I'm an American, I'm a Christian. And, um, I just didn't get it. And then, um, so when I was like 20 years old, uh, my mom had got saved, born again, and I was, I had moved out. I was living on my own and I had become really rebellious 
for no reason. And um, she said, well, you can come home and live, live at home again, but you have to go to church. So I started going to church and it was a charismatic church, non-denominational, full gospel, whatever. And it just took a while. And I, I was just thinking about all these things and listening. And I would see like um, TV preachers and be like, ew. And I felt guilty because I didn't like them. They were seen really lame. But um, just being exposed to the Bible and starting to read the Bible and hearing good teaching and just stuff like that, like I just, you know, became aware like, God, this is real. You know, the Bible is true. Jesus is real. Um, so I became born again and I really did like change my life. You know, I broke up with people and I just tried to go in a different direction. I even ended up spending some time on youth with the mission, which now I'm like, ah. um, and so anyway, that's kind of my story of how I got to, to be saved. I didn't have a very spiritual, um, you know, like I, I feel like it's kind of a, in some ways I, I raised my kids to be growing up knowing the Lord and to love God and Jesus. But for myself, I think not having had a predisposed um, Christian denomination or something that I, I think that was kind of like, I, I feel like that benefits me now in a way. I don't know. Sorry. Is that good? No, it's great. Yeah. About- yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I think that the people that do the content creators all have a different reason or a different mission in, in what we do. Um, tell me, tell me what, what made you kind of want to start doing this. Okay. It's an interesting story, but, um, the way that I feel like the way that I came about discovering this and then wanting to make videos about it. Um, it was because if you would have, Five years ago, I would never have thought in a million trillion years I would do anything like this. But um, so maybe uh, 2018 or so, I started learning about some things about like the New Age movement. Um, I started researching that a little bit, realizing that it was the religion of the end times that's in the box. You know, it's the end time religion. I was learning about the um, the government of oneness. I'll just call it that because I don't want to, I'm, I'm kind of, I had a strike today, so I'm trying to avoid catchphrases that might get, you know, the one world government, um, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. I learned about the occult um, origin of the United Nations. I learned about Alice Bailey, who was the spirit, she, it, her teachings are the spiritual department and the teachings that the United Nations is based on. So I was learning this kind of like historical stuff. And I was like, wow, this, it made the Bible like way more, like I always believed the Bible was true, but it was like the Bible so much more true. Like when Jesus says that Satan is the, the God of this world, you know, like the prince of the air and all that stuff. Like, it's kind of literal. Like, this is what's running our world. This occult weirdness is what's running our world. Yes. We start finding out about these people at the top. They really are occultists. And they have, I used to think of them as like um, atheists, communists, or something like that. You know, like they didn't have any like belief in God. They do have belief in God. They, they have a very strong belief in God. And they are, they are working for their God. Like we are working for our God. Okay. So that was one thing. Cause so I was learning all this stuff and I was like, wow. And um, I knew who Alice Bailey was and stuff, but just in that um, she, she wrote about the, the um, new order for the world and stuff like that. Then one day I came across a video. Um, I also had dipped a little bit into the letter after P this was like getting to be around 20 before 2020 uh, the letter after p like I, I was getting hearing stuff about that too and um my best friends okay i have these friends that i my girlfriend got saved like right after me so we, i've been saved since i was 20 i'm almost i'm 59 okay and so these are friends that i've had for many decades who've been with me through everything funerals divorces everything you know just all the worst things that you could have. They were the best friends ever. And so, um, but I was hearing them talk about things 
that I didn't quite understand. That didn't really ring any bells. Didn't you know, like seven mountains in the kingdom and all that stuff. And so one day I was listening to a video called um, Luciferian Christians, and I was like, "What is this about?" So I listened to it, and he was explaining very detailed how Alice Bailey's um, teachings and how much she talked about how they would in infiltrate the church and use the church to bring the New Age in through the church using other means, like for reasons. And um, it just, it kind of blew my mind because I was like, what, you know? And the, the reason I'm doing this initially is because I found out about this and I was really upset and it was like very much of a burden for me. So I really looked into it a lot more. And then I um, started making videos out of, um, not frustration or desperation, but just like mm, did we lose you? Well, let's give it a second, see if we can catch it. There we go. Are you back? I'm back. Okay. Um, so it was the frustration. Yes. So it was it was very it was very personal for me at first, like I said. I just found out. Once I found that out, I just started researching a lot more and finding out more and more and more. And then once you start looking into it, you'll find there's been people doing this long before me. I did not invent this. I did not discover it. I'm not breaking news. And I'm like ankle deep, I think, in, in knowledge about this. And I don't necessarily want to be neck deep either. But um, so, yeah, it was very personal. I looked into it a lot more. I did a lot of research. And then I started making videos. I really wanted to make my friends and family aware, like, what are you hearing in church? Like, what are you being told? What are you being taught? You know, like I, and then I started realizing as I'm researching how much I was already in it myself. And I didn't even realize that when I first started making videos, I knew I was in a church that was really charismatic. We had prophets and stuff all the time, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that my own former pastor was connected with Bethel church. I didn't know that. You know, he, he was just one of the, he was at one of the things you bullhorned. Really? Yeah. The one with um, Chuck Pierce. Okay. And, and um, what's her face? Cindy Jacobs. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of these people. I was in a church that was very connected to all this, but I didn't know any of these people. I just knew my pastor and he traveled a lot. He went to all these things. He was flying around all the time. We always had guest speakers. We always had prophets, you know, parading in and out. And, um, but I didn't know where he was going. I didn't, I didn't watch, I don't know. I, I went to church and I raised my kids and I was a homebody. You know, I wasn't like into all this, knowing all these other people, but now I found out he wrote a forward to one of Bill Johnson's books. He wow. was at, there was a video I made where Bob Jones is teaching people how to astral project, i.e. Yeah. or AKA trips to heaven literally astral projecting and i came across this by accident sometimes i'm just not even looking for something and it comes across and it was um a conference from way long ago at bethel church with bob jones and on the um the little conference thumbnail thing was my my pastor with mm. all those people and i was like what you know i'm like so i'm like finding this out as as i'm making videos you know um so I'm, I'm not sure if I answered the question that you asked. Yeah, but... yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so it's, it's um, go ahead. So so um, now I've I've I'm the type of person that I've had this interview with you in my mind as I'm going to sleep and saying my prayers and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything I want to say to you and ask you and tell you and all this stuff. So I've got to say this. It's a little off topic, but I got to say this. this is my, my favorite video of yours that I watched. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting chills right now thinking about the video. When I watched it, I was just like, oh, wow. I had to call the flower girl and watch this. And then I watched it three or four more times after that was exposing Taylor Swift as <laughs> that one. I the First of all, it broke my heart, um, but the quality and the editing and the sound and, and the music choice and everything. I was just like, I wish I could be that creative. I'm very, you know, square pegs and square holes, round pegs and round holes. But that video just floored me. It was, I mean, it was perfect. Wow. It is like one of the best videos I've ever seen. 
What? Yes. That was that. totally that was totally um I wasn't even gonna put it on YouTube. You know, oh, I was wow. just gonna make it. Yeah, I was just gonna make it because there are Swifties in my family, you know? Yeah. And I mean, come on, I like some music too that isn't great, you know. And I I don't listen to that kind of music very much anymore once in a while, but like my taste in music would be just as bad, literally. Um so but anyway, it's here's the thing. I'm like, I'm here making these videos. I'm exposing this Luciferian in the church mm -hmm. um new movement that if you can't see that someone like Taylor Swift, that's to me obvious, how are you going to know if it's something that's less obvious and more subtle? I mean, I don't think these guys are very subtle, but like for a younger person who's maybe not as grounded in the word or whatever, you know, you hear Jesus, you hear this, whatever, and you just think, oh, it's good. He said Jesus. He said God. Um, but for Taylor, this, the, I'm sorry, the Taylor Swift video was just kind of like, I just wanted to show, you know, I was really for my, some of my kids to see. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then my uh, app I use had some new um, perks and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to try out some fun stuff, but I never thought it was like, Oh, no, it, I made it way longer. I just took little enough just to make. It so way. first of all, the song you used, um, I don't know if you know the background of that song dancing in the moonlight. Do you know the oh. story behind that song? No, it's a it's a tragic it. story. It's a tragic story. Three Dog Night, but who it was? I can't no, no, remember. no. I, I forgot who it was, but it wasn't Three Dog Night. It was this guy, and if I understand the story right, he takes his girlfriend to Jamaica, and they're on the beach one night together, and this gang this gang jumps them, and they brutalize her in the most evil ways, if you know what I'm saying, and then they wow. beat him to near death. And they leave them there in this destruction and they survive. And he said that he wrote that song as, as a healing process to get him out of all that PTSD kind of memories wow. and all that stuff. And it was a, it was a song of his healing that healed him and let him move on with his life. And so wow. when you played that song and then I'm seeing Taylor Swift, I'm just like, that is the absolute best piece of music for that and the uh, timing was great and the visuals were great and it was it was just great i just loved it um you. so one of the questions um I, I don't know if you touched into um why do you do this is how you got started in it um i'd love to know what app you're using because <laughs> you, your your visuals are amazing i um i don't mind and i i have said I'll make a how-to video. Like, I don't mind doing that. I just get, I get really like subtracted and like, oh, I gotta make this and that and that. Um, maybe this week while I'm off of, you know, it's called, the app is awesome. It's, it's a free app that I pay $15 a year. I don't, I'm not affiliated. I don't get any kickbacks from this, but um, $15 a year for like all the extra plus things. So it's only 50 bucks for the whole year. It's, it's um it's really for iPad or iPhone, so it's more of a touch screen kind of oh, okay. app. But I did find um directions on how to make it work with a mouse if somebody wanted to use it. I like when I decided to do this, which is only like two years ago, um I splurged that's the only investment really I've made is I bought an iPad. Because I was you could do it on your phone, but it's you know, my old, you know, our eyes, it's like too hard to be doing that on this tiny phone. So I got this app and I just started playing around with it. I mean, it does amazing things and it, maybe some of it is I have some artistic abilities. So maybe that helps me, but the, the things that it does is, is amazing. And my husband is a, um, he's like a pro at Photoshop and oh, he can, great. he can't even believe what it does like he cannot even believe it the you know, layers some of the, things, yeah. the layers back because I, I can never would have thought about it but because i i do some of this now 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm using a much more expensive program than you are that doesn't have near the abilities yours does, but I can spot the layers that, you know, you're overlaying yeah. certain things. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's called picture in picture. So you just touch a button, you pick the video or the photo that you want to put on top of your photo and you touch another button and it makes it full screen. And then you can do all kinds of filters on the picture that's in the picture on the picture so you can make it mm. like fade out or you can make it black and white you can make it weird you know all these things but i just kind of like play out and see what looks good and different things and and it really it's like i never i never made videos before you know i made well, like slideshows for my kids when, when i first saw your videos i just kind of sat back in my chair and i went why why am i doing this how am i going to compete with that I got nothing. I got no game with my videos compared to yours because I just, I'm not very artistic. When, when I was in architect school, um, I can draw houses. I can draw a whole bunch of things with a straight edge and pencils and stuff, but I can't draw an apple freehand. It, my brain just does not work like that. So my artistic stuff is very, very, uh, very shallow very dry there's not a whole lot of depth to it so i'm i always admire people that have that that artistic ability who can really turn out videos and you're like that's just amazing i can't even do that well alabama you your content is great like you and drew i watch you guys all the time i don't care that you don't have bells and whatever and there are believe most of the co the complaints that i get are because i'm one person was like why do your videos have to be so weird? And I was like, you can you read the article, you know, I put an article and I put, I don't know, whatever. I don't even remember what it was. Or people don't, people don't like some of the graphics, you know, they uh -huh. think it's too overstimulating. Like everybody's different. And some people are sensitive to certain things um, or triggered by certain things. And I'm not trying to be insensitive. I don't want to, I never would have thought anything I was making would be annoying, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, it, it actually bothers some people. And I think they would rather listen just to someone talk like you and Drew. And I think what you're doing is excellent and you don't have to. It's... Okay. Say that, say that again. You broke up. Sorry. I, I saw the spinny thing and I wasn't sure if I should keep That's talking. Right. Um, yeah, you're, I, prob I, you're probably not broadcasting if that's spinning. Oh, okay. It's, <clears throat> you're here it's, now. It's, okay. Yeah. Where was I? Um, yeah. My videos, I think, I think my videos are, I don't think they're the content is informative as yours because you're teaching people things that, that they have never heard before. I'm um, including yeah. me. Like I said, when I started watching your stuff, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Now I heard that statement before. And now I understand what this false prophet was saying. We talked earlier about the manifestation of the sons of God. Yeah. When I first saw Timothy Dixon make that statement, his body language before he said those words, manifestation of the sons of God, it went uncomfortable. I mean, he's like, yeah. okay, I'm just going to say it. And then he said it. And I'm like, that's a clue that there's a problem here. Yeah, and, and I had a hard time finding stuff, but then you started cranking it out and I, I couldn't get enough of it. Yeah, that's a big one. Like I said, I was in a NAR church before it was called NAR, like starting in like 1989 or 90, all through the 90s. Should I keep talking? Okay, yeah. I'm back. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was in a NAR church before it was called NAR. I mean, no one's calling themselves NAR, right? Um, there's a lot of people who might be under this influence that don't even know that they are in it. But um, back then, back then, I never heard. Um, should I pause when it's doing that? You no, know, you actually you are coming through. I've not heard okay. any skips. Okay, maybe, it's just, maybe the visual lags a little bit, but you know it's okay. all right. When I was in this church, I never heard the word seven mountains. I never heard the word new apostolic reformation. I never heard about manifest sons of god or joel's army i don't think i ever heard enough of that to make it really ring bells you know what i mean and these are all words that are in the bible right i mean manifest sons of god is in the bible it's what happens 
when Jesus comes back and there's a rapture, I'm sorry, rapture, yeah. um, resurrection. It's the resurrection of our bodies. If, you know, the, the dead in Christ will, will precede us and then we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and we will become, have glorified bodies, whoever is alive when Jesus returns. That's the manifestation of the sons of God. That's the true, the true, right. that's the truth of it. But what they're saying is that they're going to become glorified immortal before Jesus comes back. Right. Basically deified. Yes. And equal so to Jesus, equal, equal to the to, Lord. Yeah. Equal to Jesus. And it's not just one person saying it. And if once you learn that, you'll start to pick it up in, in people speaking, even when they're not exactly saying it right out. Because a lot of times they sort of tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, now what? Because I could just keep going, you know. Yeah, I well, like well, this kind of leads into the to the to the next subject on our outline, and that is the infiltration of the occult in the church. Tell, tell me what your thoughts are about about any of that, the the occult infiltrating the church. Okay, well, um, the first thing that I learned about was. Um, I told you, I learned a little bit about Alice Bailey, somebody who I had never heard of before. And she's like one of the most influential people that you never heard of. Um, so once I found out, you know, cause I knew she's like a real historical person. This is going back to before world war two, you know, where they were starting to form the, the United nations or different groups, you know, planning and preparing for the new age or the new world and all that stuff. And she has all these um, occult writings that she channeled, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read one of her quotes. I do. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back to this. Back in nine, this is in 1904. These are the kind of things that really made me go, "What?" You know, sit up and take notice. Um, this is at the beginning of the Theosophical Society, which is kind of what the New Age has came from. Um, one the uh, the leader of this society said that I believe it is through the churches and not through the, the Theosophical Society that Theosophy, which is the worship of Lucifer, must and should come to large bodies of people in the West. So they were planning to bring the New Age and Theosophy through the church. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you a little historical background, and then you can see how it actually is happening. How it actually is happening. Um, Alice Bailey said, uh, the three main channels through which the preparation for the new age is going, is going on might be regarded as the church, the Masonic fraternity and the education field. This is how influential she is. One of her disciples, Robert Muller, I think he was like the, um, UN secretary, or maybe he was the undersecretary, but he was at the very top. I think he was the top. For 40 years, and he has a huge influence on education and common core curriculum and stuff like that. I mean, it came from him and he got wow. it from her. So she's she's influencing not just um, the new age. She's influencing governments. And she's I mean, it's really not her. OK, this is the enemy and the spirit high, some kind of high up spirit. Maybe it's the devil himself mm -hmm. who's working through her to, to make these plans. And um, this is one of, where is it? There's one quote of hers that blew, that blew my mind. Because when you hear it, you'll hear what you hear some of these pastors saying. You'll also hear what some of these letter after P people are saying. But I'm mm -hmm. just going to read it. It's kind of long, but I'm going to read it. Um, In case y'all missed that. In case y'all missed that. Um the letter that follows the letter P is the subject. So we, if we say it, it's going to be a problem. So, yeah, I get strikes for that. So think about the alphabet and the letter that comes after P yeah. anonymous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she said, it is time that the, the church woke up to its true mission, which is to materialize the kingdom of God on earth here today. Today, here and now, the time has passed wherein we can emphasize a future incoming kingdom. Whoops. People are no longer interested in a possible heavenly state or a probable hell. 
They need to learn that the kingdom is here and must express itself on earth. This is Lucifer loving Alice Bailey. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual goal is the establishing of the kingdom of God. One of the first steps towards this is to prepare men's minds to accept the fact that the reappearance of Christ is imminent. Okay, these wagers talk about Christ. They don't mean Jesus. Okay. You must tell men everywhere that the masters and their groups of disciples are actively working to bring order out of chaos. Uh. You must tell them that there is a plan, the plan with a capital P, as in trust the plan, uh -huh. okay? And that nothing can possibly arrest the working out of that plan. Nothing can stop what's coming. Have you ever heard that? Has anyone ever heard anybody say that in a meme or something? You must tell them that the hierarchy stands. The hierarchy is the spiritual hierarchy of ascended masters, which as a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, it is the powers and principalities. They have a hierarchy. We know about the powers that we, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, you know, that. I'm right. sorry. <laughs> right. um, you must tell them that the hierarchy stands and it has stood for thousands of years and is the expression of the accumulated wisdom of the ages. This... The new age that's in the church is the same religion back in Egypt, back in Babylon, all that stuff. It's the same thing that they've been keeping and they're still doing it and they're preserving it. And the, they even said that the, the religion of the future is the, is the religions of the past, not Christianity, not Jesus. OK, um, you must tell them this is, this is the kicker right here. Okay, it, it has stood for thousands of years and is the expression of the accumulated wisdom of the ages. You must tell them above all else that God is love, that the hierarchy is love, and that Christ is coming because he loves humanity. This is the message which you must give at this time. And with this responsibility, I leave you. Work, my brothers. And I know a lot of people, maybe they are watching already know this, but she was very connected to the United Nations. And her company that she started was called Lucifer Publishing. Mm -hmm. And now it's called Lucius Trust. And it's still part, affiliated with the United Nations. Um, so these are the kind of people that plan to infiltrate the church. And how do you see this happening? <clears throat> the most basic, basic, basic way to me are they have the luciferian doctrine which is what the serpent said to eve in the garden which ye shall be as gods that's the bottom line if somebody is teaching anything on those lines that ye shall be as gods and then they lower jesus there's examples of them lowering jesus that he was born again and he was being punished in hell and <clears throat> that he wasn't born as god he didn't do any miracles as god Okay, these are big wigs like Bill Johnson, Todd White, Kenneth Copeland, and these guys are all connected and they all go to each other's conferences and they all chum around and they all write books and they, you know, it's not like these guys are just individual Lone Rangers. No, yeah. this is a tight network that's very um, global. I mean, it's everywhere. I did a video on some different events that were like in Amsterdam and how the NARS in Israel and like, and we've seen recently things in Africa. Uh, I'm not saying that was NAR with that guy, but um, all that mystical, like has any, have you heard about that? The, the guy Joshua? that was torturing people and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. TB Joshua or something yeah. like that. I don't want to be getting off the topic, but that's, that's not that uncommon. And, Basically, that's a really good example right there. It's an extreme example. But that was not a, this is not a bad sheep, you know? This is a wolf. This is yeah. one of those angels of light disguised as a minister of righteousness, but it's really a minister of Satan. That is what the Bible says. It uses yeah, the, that kind of language. The slide and, that I put up before we came on um, with the attributes of a false prophet. Um, yeah. Something that I talked about with blue, <clears throat> with blue tap in my last live stream. We know that they're not saved because in the Bible, Jesus says, I never knew you. So they were never saved during any of the time when they were displaying that fruit. 
And mm-hmm. that's what the people that we're seeing in the news media today, um, you know, TB Joshua, I think that's his name and, and yeah. some other ones that have, have broken out with um, uh, sexual misconduct and all that in the church um, mm-hmm. that, that you, I, I just, the fruit, the fruit is telling me the condition of their heart. Maybe I can't judge their heart, but I can take the fruit and tell you what that heart is pretty much like that. That's my point yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, I had a, I had sort of an analogy. I like, I like to make up, I sit around and think of analogies sometimes. <laughs> um, after listening to your discussion with the tap, this is me making an analogy of her perspective and an analogy of my perspective. And some of what I heard her say, um, I could understand what she was saying. If I was talking about a brother or sister in Christ, like someone I went to church with or was friends with, that was maybe off or this or that, okay, that's um, her perspective is is kind of like that. This is my analogy of it. This is this is my analogy of her perspective on how, like how we treat or talk about the false prophets and the heresy and the heresy hunting and all that stuff. I feel like she sees it, and especially in her conversation with you, as these are like mischievous children that are being harshly reprimanded and verbally abused instead of treating them with patience and kindness and using the fruits of the spirit. That was kind of the way I perceived what she was saying. Like she saw them being kind of bullied and we should use more like the fruits of the spirit to be kind. And I, I mean, I agree with that in interpersonal relationships. If somebody came on my channel and disagreed with me, that I would want to treat them that way. But the way that I see the situation in the church with the false prophets is this, I see little children being led away, the children of the church, by the Pied Piper to watch a circus with loud music and flashing lights. And the clowns are um, harmful to children. Mm -hmm. That begins with a P, and I don't want to say that word either. We got it. They're abusers of children. And to make it even worse, the children that are being entertained by abusers that look like clowns they're actually watching the circus on railroad tracks and there's a train coming okay that's how i see this like people need rescued from these wolves i don't see them as i really don't see them as um when they teach some of the things that they teach um and when you understand the whole movement and what it's it's um where it's heading where did it come from and where is it going? That is the thing. And I'm just going to quote one Bible verse right here. And this is just one, Galatians 1, 8 and 9. But even though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. I don't want to say that to anybody, but that's what the Bible is telling you. Because it's so serious. Another gospel isn't going to save you. Yeah. They are teaching another gospel. If they have any gospel at all, I've never heard it. I would love someone to send me an example of one of these nar guys, one of these false prophets actually preaching the gospel of how we're separated from God by our sins and Jesus died on the cross and it's only his blood that saves us and that we have eternal life. And that's what he came to give us. Like, you're not happy with eternal life? That's not good enough for you? No, you have to go flying up and in heaven and doing all this weird stuff whatever um, i'm sorry see i'm going sicilian except i'm irish no that's fine that's fine um one of the things that that i i noticed that robin bullet did um along the lines of what you're talking about is instead of preaching the gospel the closest he came that i've seen is he preached a sermon that jesus was really rich So it's okay if I'm rich, Robin Bullock. Jesus was rich. He had five houses he could go to. His dad had a business. He inherited all that from his dad. He didn't have to work. Well, if he was rich, why did he tell the disciples, go down to the lake, catch a fish, and there's going to be some money to pay our taxes out of it? Why didn't he just send Judas to go pay the taxes? Because Jesus was rich after all. But they're using stuff like that to justify their own lust and their own actions. Jesus was rich, so I can be rich. You know what? Um, 
I agree with you, but I, this is going to sound, I don't know if, it, I don't care. This sounds crazy to me, but sometimes I feel like some of the things that they do and say are literally them saying, this is what I am. They're telling you who yes. they are. They are showing you who they are. They are deliberately speaking the opposite of the Bible. And they're, it's like, at the same time, there's that um, verse in Deuteronomy, I can't remember if it's 13 or 18, where God says he would, if there's a false prophet, uh, a prophet that prophesies um, a, a true thing, but they have you try to yeah. lead you to, to another God. Right. That he's testing you to see if you love him. Yes. Yes. It okay. says that is a test. Yes. So these guys are, they're like, I feel like God is really, truly using them, but not in a good, not that they're good. But I think he's allowing them and using them and he's testing people and they aren't reading their Bible and they're not focusing on the words and the teachings of Jesus. And they're allowing these guys to give them these like fantasy things and pump them up. That's a good one. I should put, we're going to pump you yeah. up. You know, I, oh, put yeah. that one yeah. videos. I used that one um, time, that little clip in one of my videos. Yeah. They want to get you all pumped up. And the, the, so where was I? Yeah. I think, I think they, there's other times that they, that they do weird things or they say things that are so off that I really feel like they're almost, it's almost like a trick, like a prank, the mm -hmm. trickster kind of thing, like ha, ha, yeah, hidden ha, in plain, ha. hidden in plain sight. Yeah, I'm doing it right in front of your face. Are you so stupid that you don't even get it? When um, I mean, there's a million examples. They do, they do it all, all the time. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it makes me upset. <laughs> yeah, the, one thing that I learned when Drew and I went to Bullhorn Bullock was we would talk to these people that would come up to us. We were not allowed to go to them, and we only had a certain strip that we could stand in and be legal. But they would come to us, and they were nice, most of them. Um, and one of the guys I was talking, I said, you know, Robin, this, that, the other, and all the above. I, and he's like, I don't know anything about that. I said, you not watch his videos? And he says, no, I just come to church here. And I'm thinking, how in the world is this man, you think this man is a prophet and in, in the evidence is everywhere in his videos that he is not hearing from our God, including a video uh, where he's saying that, that uh, Joe Biden would not be president. I looked around and just out of conversation, I said, Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said, he won't. Just like that. <laughs> he said he won't. He made yeah. that video. He didn't say there was going to be shenanigans with people pulling levers. No, he just out, out and out said Joe Biden won't be president. And we know that was a lie. And he said Jesus told him that in a conversation. Well, that's when I realized these people are having conversations in their head. We all do that. But they are thinking it's a real conversation with the Lord. And that can be so dangerous because it's either the deceit of their own heart talking to them or it's an outside spirit, not of the Lord talking to them. Yeah. They can't tell the difference. Yeah. I, I want to make sure so I'm really clear about something because I, I do get kind of upset with these um, false prophets and teachers because I really do feel like they are in an organized, orchestrated way. Um leading people away from the truth of Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's true born again believers in, in, in this movement, like even at like IHOP, you know, there's, there's, it's not like, I think that whole thing was false from the very beginning. It's foundations are rotten with, but I mean, just knowing the prophets that brought it forth, the, the Kansas city prophets, Bob Jones and all those guys knowing enough that I, I had already read about them, you know, I, I, that's, that's why I feel that way. But, um, I would never want to like make an accusation to 
a, a fellow believer or somebody that I don't really know that well, because I know from my own channel how many people I hear from that were caught up in it and they are so regretful and they are like, oh, you know, the Lord led them out. And but they and they were saved, but they were in it and they and that they something woke them up, something happened, whether it was watching one of our videos or something completely, you know, before, you know, a long time ago, people are coming out and I want to have sensitivity and compassion and I don't want to act like I'm so smart or anything like I never knew any like I could it could have been me. You know, I got out of that church and I was out of it since like um, 2004. So it's been a long time. I took a long time. I'm not even going to church. And then I became aware of all this stuff. And then I started researching it. And so I am not um, super scholar lady or I'm the, I don't have a degree. You know, I just, for whatever reason, really wanted and I want to continue to do this. But I don't want people to ever think that I'm thinking I'm better than anybody or it's not, it's not from that. It's not from that kind of a perspective. You know what I mean? It really is. Um, honestly, it really is concerning that, like I said, it did kind of start with, with good friends that I have talked to you. A lot. You know, we, we talk a lot. It's kind of an awkward subject, <laughs> but um, we got to talk about some of these things recently and that there was more agreement than I was expecting so i'm hopeful i'm hopeful for the for these people but they need to be warned and i think sometimes whether it's you um being sicilian i'm not saying you shouldn't you, sh you know i mean if, if we are upset it is because there is so much at stake you know what i mean there's so much at stake people's very souls you know yeah, it's it's my it's my for lack of a better term, it's my nature to defend the innocent and those that either can't or won't defend themselves. I made a career out of it. I yeah. I've kept my wife and children in house and clothes and foods and education going out there and 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 fighting for people who can't or won't defend themselves. So when I see this going on. I'm like, I, that's, I have to go after this. I have to, what's called pressing the fight. It's yeah. like, I'm back on the SWAT team. You got to press the fight. You take the fight to the bad guy. You don't wait for them to come to you. No, you go get them. And so yeah. when I get into these, these, these full blown Sicilian yelling, screaming in my videos, that is real passion, but it's not anger. It's not superiority. It there's, yeah. I was telling, uh, I, th I think it was blue. I was telling her on the other live stream, I am a very reclusive person when it comes to who I am. I am fine in my house with nobody talking to me except for her. Mm -hmm. And I'm not very outgoing and I'm not, I, I was when I was in uniform, but not now. And so this right here, what's happening to these people, I put a slide on my Facebook page. I really not done a lot with Facebook and I'm trying to get it back in there. It's a picture of a wolf and it says, hi, I'm an NAR apostle prophet. And then in small print under that print under that, it says, may I speak to your new converts? And that's what's happening. The wolves, yeah. these people that don't have enough uh, foundation to be able just to say that doesn't sound right. They're falling for it hook, line, and sinker, and, it, yeah. and it's taking them off the narrow path and moving them into a wide path uh, type of journey. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been in preparation for a really long time. I mean, the more you find out about church history, but I feel like it really amped up in the last 100 or 150 years where these kinds of... Um, deceptive teachings and you know you you've got like the extreme version where they're literally teaching witchcraft um which i think the way people de um define that they don't they probably think of it like like the taylor swift video or something where they're going around fire and wearing witch hats and stuff but like they've been they've been doing it for a really long time we have really extreme like mystical magical new age occulty stuff but then we also have just um leaving out the essentials of the gospel and just kind of watered down so you've got this kind of combination so maybe someone's in this like 
kind of watered down church or they don't it's but it's not like woo woo charismatic maybe they go from a church like that to a charismatic church and they get all these spiritual experiences but they still never really got saved like you i, I don't know like i want to make sure i, I don't state that but um i think there might be a lot of christians that believe in jesus or go to church or maybe they grew up in the church or whatever you know and they hear about jesus they know about jesus but when it comes to um would you give up you know things for him you know are you set you know are you really saved are you really prepared to um make sacrifice, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, I think a lot of times there's like a cultural Christianity where people just kind of have adopted it um, or they really think Jesus is cool and stuff. But, um, but maybe they're, they're hearing like a, another, like, like that verse I just read about another gospel. Um, if anyone preaches another gospel or another Jesus or whatever, like, I feel like there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of people in that category maybe. And then you've got this, like a, um the new age stuff and the thing about the new age stuff is it's all preparing for the coming one you know what i mean they're, they're preparing through the church for their christ to reappear yes yeah. you know and it's it's just so crazy when you find out like i didn't even know you know i always was aware of like as a christian i was aware of what the new you know the new age movement and we used to have um i think a better awareness at, when I first got saved, it was like the eighties, like cult awareness, like what do Mormons believe? What do Jehovah's Witness believe? What do they say about Christ? Like what, it was always like, what do they say about Jesus or what do they teach about Jesus? And, you know, here in this case with the NAR and stuff, they don't even teach the same Jesus, Yeah. you know? So if you have people that are um, in that category and they're listening to false prophets and all this stuff, it really is dangerous really really is um extremely dangerous yeah if you um and i don't i don't know spencer smith and i don't agree with everything he says but if you look at his his third adam series one two three three x and now four yeah. um he is he is exposing some really heavy duty sinister yeah. behind the scene things um, yes. Now, you you had told me that you also wanted to talk about the New Age um, and the NAR influence on the church. Um, I don't know if we've like officially gotten into that or you've said what you want to say officially or. But tell me, tell um, me, tell me what your thoughts are on on what's coming in. Oh, and what's coming? What kind of things are that are New Age that they're teaching? Yeah, or the or the the uh, the influence like like we've talked about. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm I'm real big on these people that say, "Oh, it's eleven eleven. Jesus wants to talk to me." That kind of stuff. Oh. Even something so little like uh, what Liberty Heist does. Um, Jesus wants to talk to you because you see two twenty two on a digital clock. And my thing is, what did we do before digital clocks? You didn't look at an analog watch and say, "It's eleven eleven. Jesus wants to talk to me." Because it's yeah. never been about that, but now all of a sudden it is. And it, and the way I look at it is, let's say you have a billion paths that you can walk. There's one narrow path that will get you to live with Jesus forever. Satan doesn't care which other of those, that billion paths you walk, as long as it's not that one. And if he can pervert that path enough, then you're off of it. Right. Well, um, as far as like numbers and stuff, like a lot, a lot of them do do that. I don't like, I felt, I don't focus on that a lot. I, I try to focus more on like what the doctrine is, but like we were talking before is, um, if you are questioning what someone's teaching or something, if it's not found in the Bible and it is found in the occult, that is that is the problem because that there are a lot of things that are that are being taught, you know what I mean, that are that are not biblical. And there's a lot of in in-house arguments about different, you know, doctrines and stuff. But um they're not biblical. And then when you when you realize that they actually are they do come from somewhere. So like all these things that these guys teach or that are wrong, 
um, they didn't just pull them out of their the, their hat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I had a couple. I'm not. I'm not sure if one of the things I w- was going to bring up. Um, to me, a big one, like we were saying about the you, you shall be as gods. Um, you can find that expressed in many, many different ways. Uh, the manifest sons of God. I'll read. Do you want me to read the quote where he, um, the Bill Heyman quote? Yeah. Any anything you anything you want to say? Oh yeah, here it is. This is just a couple sentences. I mean, I read this one a lot. This one, two of my favorite ones is the the one where Al Billy's talking about the kingdom of God and how we have to bring it to earth. And this is a new age. Uh-huh. Occultist, okay. Um, because the Bible does not say that we bring the kingdom of God to earth, right? Okay, it says his kingdom is not of this earth, okay, and it says that you will inherit his kingdom, uh-huh. or and and it, or he says, Come and receive the, the kingdom that's been prepared for you. You know, we inherit it, we don't build it. See, they're like that doesn't. But see, people people hear kingdom of God. So, oh, it sounds sounds like Bible, but mm-hmm. no, they're saying they're bringing it. Okay. Yep. Which is a whole different thing. And then to find out, they call they want to bring the kingdom of God, but it's their God. Okay. So anyway, here's Bill Heyman, <clears throat> who's considered one of the highest. Um, he's like in his eighties. Mm-hmm. Oh, and he mentored my former pastor. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow, you were uh, you were running a mission a yard from the gate of hell, as that song says. I know. I had no idea. Oh. <laughs> um, wow. but like I said, I might have heard something like this. Maybe I just wasn't sinking in, you know. I think and a I lot of us you... trust our pastors and yes. we, we trust that hey, you know, they've got a degree from seminary, they've been counseling right. people, they've seen it all, they heard it all, they know yes. this Bible. And so, mm-hmm. like I said, when I was Catholic. When we left Catholicism, we just believe what the Assemblies of God preacher said because we were taught they know the Bible. You don't. You need to learn from them. Mm-hmm. And and that's the way it was. And and that has hurt so many people yeah. trusting preachers that that they really should have been uh, verifying what the preacher said. Yeah. Before I read this, I'm just going to because because of what you just said. Um, yeah, my my pastor was very. Very educated, very well spoken, very eloquent. Had a great voice. He could sing. He was funny. Um, he was very multi talented. He knew the Hebrew and the Greek, and he explained all these things. And but there were times, and my mom will testify. She went, she was with us. You know, we went to church together. She loved him and everything, but she'd be like, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh. You know. Sometimes I would do that too. You, it's like, oh, it's so deep, I couldn't understand it. And um, it, towards the end, though, I started—I forget what. There's a couple things that tipped me off that started to tip me off. Um, I started noticing how they were um, getting into this whole difference between the rhema and the logos, and how the, you know, basically they were trying to equate the new spoken words of the prophets to the word of God in the Bible. They were trying to sort of prepare the ground for you to, to believe that. And that, I, that was like, what? You know, I was like, huh? And then um, towards the very end, it was to, to where, where I formerly really trusted my pastor, because that's like you said, we don't go into church expecting, like, even though the Bible says test the spirits and all that stuff, right? You don't want, you don't, you don't expect to go into church, especially if you're a new Christian or whatever, or you just change churches or whatever. Like, you don't go in there thinking, I better beware of what this guy's teaching and be all like on suspicious or something. You know what yeah, I mean? You gotta be on, gotta I, be on guard. Yeah. So I, but I got to the point where he's like flipped to the spot pa- passage. And I mean, this is a church where people have their Bibles in their laps, everybody. Right. Um, go to this, you know, go to this person. I'll turn here and I'll turn there and I'll turn here, you know, all that stuff. But I was like reading the thing. I started reading them in context. Like I read my Bible, but like when he was pulling a verse here and there, I would stop and I would read what was before it and what was after it. Before I even heard anybody saying you should do this. Mm-hmm. And I started going, wait a minute, that is not what that means. You know, I was starting to already bells, you know, light bulbs were going off. But still, I never thought of it as anything. Um, like what I think of the new apostolic reformation 
And then to be clear, it's one part, it's one department of the new one world religion. It's not yeah. the entire one world religion, but it is going into the one yeah. world religion. And it's, there's other things that are also you could criticize, but this is just my corner on them, right? Yeah, the the uh, the the fact that nowadays when you watch somebody, you have to sit here on guard to hear and make sure what they're saying is true. Yeah. It's kind of a sad situation, but I mean, we're told that's where we're going to be. Um, yeah. If if I remember correctly, the Lord, when he comes back, he says, he says, there's not going to be a lot of people to rapture because he's like, well, I find any faith that tells me yeah. there's not a lot. And so these people. Um, now, depending on how you believe on rapture, when, and all that stuff, I think a lot of people are going to be gone from the earth. They're going to be dead by this point. So it's not this great big rapture. I don't think a great big rapture. I think most of us will either go natural causes or will be persecuted to death. Um, yeah. but, but today, right now, Spencer Smith was right the people who say judge not are totally wrong because we live in the day of deception. You can't trust anything anyone tells you. You have got to verify it with that word, that written word of God, because that's what you're going to be judged on. God's not going to yeah. judge you by what some prophet said on YouTube. He's going to judge you by that written word. And what, what I find amazing is that people will go and they'll just they'll just eat it up. And like you said earlier, you didn't know what was being said. I used to do that, too. And I would be like, well, that, you know, I don't want to raise my hand because that'll show I'm ignorant. But it's got to be OK because he's a preacher yeah. and it's not not nowadays. It's not. Yeah. If I went back in time, I probably would have like my head would probably be exploding if I could go back in time and like listen to some of the things that they were teaching. I just remember certain things. Um, but it just, you trust the environment that you're in and it's hard to wrap your brain. It, it is hard to wrap your brain around, even though the Bible tells us that there is deception in the church, that it's the enemy, it's wickedness. It's the, um, you know, how Satan appears as an angel of light. Like mm -hmm. I take the Bible more literally now, like that's real, you know, even in, this is weird, but like, even in the occult, like a little bit, like I've read, like about like, like when Freemasons get to a certain degree, they see a spirit that I got to, you know, they see spirits that, that mm -hmm. come and visit them um, of different colors and, and stuff, you know? So, and then when you hear Paul saying, you know, that Satan appears as an angel of light, I think he means it like, I mean, it's literal in the, like maybe in the physical manifestation, but it's literal in, you know, not just, uh, it's more literal. I'm sorry. It's more literal than I ever would have thought. And the doctrines of demons. Okay. Oh yeah. You can't forget about those. They use very, they are using the apostles and Jesus are using very, very, very harsh words for these things. The whole book of Jude, which it's just one chapter, but Jude, there's lots of like, Second Peter chapter two, like the, there's like a whole chapter devoted to the false, the false teachers and the false prophets. And it's very, very urgently warning and it's not playing nice. And it's a completely different, um, a different uh, situation than don't judge lest you be judged and take the log out of your own eye and stuff like that. Like I, like I was saying before, I have another analogy. Do you mind if I, do you mind if I give you another analogy? No, that's absolutely. We got, we got, uh, we probably got about 15 more minutes. Okay. I'll try to think of anything else that's really good to say, but um, this was an analogy. Like I said, I was in a very difficult situation because like I said, my, my best, 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 best friends, I, I started realizing um, some of these teachings they maybe had mentioned to me, right? And um, I was really having a hard time because, like, with my own friends, I'm like, like, who am I? Who am I to say? Um, I found out that whole seven month thing. It's like from Luce, It's like from Alice Bailey. It, it's not. It might sound good, but um, so there. Here's my analogy: is is because I was trying. 
make sure that my own friends, so this is where I'm coming from on the channel too. Um, I wanted to make sure that my own friends understood that I was not attacking them or criticizing them because I love them and they, they're wonderful people who I know know Jesus and, and they've been very good, good friends to me and my family. And was like, what if you have a new friend that you, that I'm not that well acquainted with, but you have a new friend, that, which I would say is the narc. That's the friend in the analogy. And I'm your friend as well. And some one day I accidentally discover, without trying, I'm just like, I tripped over something or I, I picked up a piece of paper or whatever it is. I came across information that your new friend is an ax murderer. What do I do? What, do I tell you your friend is an ax murderer? Or do I say, oh, I don't want to offend them because they like that friend so much and I don't want to, you know, hurt their feelings and make them mad at me. But that's kind of, that's how I feel about this. That's how I feel. And I think, mm -hmm. I, I think it's true. And I think there's a lot of evidence. So most of the, most of what I try to do in my videos is show the evidence for that. That it's not just an opinion. It's not just a feeling. It's not just a difference in theology or, or doctrine. It's showing evidence of the um, this kind of an infiltration, and that it has been taught. And the Bible told us it would happen. Mm -hmm. and yeah, really I, I I know this this verse I'm talking about is in the Old Testament, but I think it I think it transferring principle to the New Testament. There's one where where he tells uh, the prophet, or he's telling someone. If if you go and tell them and they change, then they oh. will be saved and you will be saved. If you don't go and tell them, they won't be changed and your blood will be on their uh, their their blood will be on your hands. Yes. So he's holding he's holding us accountable. I think that the creators, um, content creators that have a platform to to straighten out the false doctrine maybe you're not a heretic hunter maybe your 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 ministry is something else but you're straightening out lies you're you're saving people they may change they may not change but their blood will not be held on your hands for that thank so, you yeah so telling someone like you said that's a great analogy um, that you discover something so sinister, so bad, so evil, but yet I'm not supposed to say anything to you. No, I've got to tell everyone because we've got to watch these people. We've got to mark them. We've got to point out who they are because e even it's, you know, it used to be that the new converts couldn't tell and they get taken aside, but now it's the older people that have been Christian for years and it's yeah. all because they want the prophet to be true. They want them to be a prophet. They want this to be true. And none yeah. of it's true. So they believe the lie the whole time. And I think that was that was, you know, predicted in the Bible. It's sad that it's here, but it's also it's also very reassuring that for me, the people who do uh, create content that points out all this false doctrine um, it's 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 part of trying to throw someone a, a lifesaver, a ring. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get. Thank you okay. for. Um, I'm glad you said that because I was gonna I was gonna write it in my um, outline or my note somewhere. You were talking about Ze the book of Ezekiel. I can't remember what chapter it is, but it's God telling Ezekiel to be a watchman, mm -hmm. and if he blows the trumpet and the people um, take warning, you know. But if they, but if he doesn't blow the trumpet, and they are caught still in their sins, they die. The blood's on his hands. And I remember reading that that summer. I think it was maybe even 2020. It was when I started realizing all this stuff, and I was my mind was blown. It it was it was very upsetting, and it took a long time. And it was like a grieving kind of thing. And I was seeking the Lord. I was trying to read. You know, I was reading my Bible more, and I was. And then I started seeing it more and more. It's like, wow, even like um, this thing, what we're talking about and what, especially what I'm talking about, it sounds kind of preposterous. If you just walk up to somebody and you say, oh, there's an occult infiltration of the church and there's witches and Satanists, they're running the church and they're leading people to another Jesus who, guess what? It's the Antichrist and they're waiting for him to come back. They're waiting for their Christ to come back and they're going to hand him their kingdom that they made for him. And it's not Jesus. 
Yeah. Okay, exactly. that's pretty bad. Yeah. And in the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 8, I think it is when God gives Ezekiel this vision of what's going on in the temple. <clears throat> Okay, and there's an idol they're worshiping. They're drawing symbols on the inside of the temple, and they're the um, I don't know if it's seventy men or twenty five men. They're they're um, worshiping the sun facing the east, with their back to the temple, the mm -hmm. holy place, mm -hmm. turning their back on the holy place. And it's like even if you just read that from a Bible perspective, it's like, oh my gosh, you mean God's like these are the priests, these are the Levites and stuff doing this. How horrifying and shocking that is from like a spiritual, you know, standpoint. But that he's showing us back then that was what was happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It didn't go away. I mean, there was a lot of these kinds of things happening in, you know, in Bible times. That's why they were getting judged and going off, getting carried off to Babylon. You know what I mean? They were worshiping other gods and sacrificing their children, all kinds of really sick stuff. Yeah, it's kind of a side, it's kind of a side, a huge subject, but that kind of yeah. reminds me about these people that say, um, oh, well, America's going to fall, but the Christian's not going to be affected. You're going to be fine. That's just the tickling of the ears. How can God show you in the Old Testament where everyone went into exile because they were idol yeah. worshiping, but yet you say, Oh no, the sinner is going to do without and, and you're going to get a wealth transfer and you're going to be fine yeah. just the way you are. And they don't see that it's ear tickling. Um, yeah. one of the, one of the things that you, you said earlier, I wanted to touch on was the Bible verse. Um, I baptize you with, with water. Uh, but there's one who's coming, he'll baptize you with the spirit and with fire. And they yeah. stop and they never read because you were talking about reading before and reading after. They That's never see fire. that that fire is not what you want. That is judgment fire. Yes. But if you don't read and you just trust that trust that preacher to tell you everything, you're just like, oh, yeah, I want the fire of God. Not yeah. according to that verse. Not in that verse. No. You don't. No, um, see, that's one of the things where it's like it's like a trick. It's like a trick. It's a it's a sick, it's a diabolical trick. I mean, who, what people are operating with some knowledge of who they're serving or not? I think at the top they know who they're serving, but it's a diabolical trick to get the, the, these words in all these Christians' mouth. Fire of God! Fire of God! Fire! Fire! Oh, fire. you know, it's like you don't know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just crazy. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, there there's I'm going to do a video on NAR bud buzz words. I know there's a lot of people that have done them, but but I think what I'm what I may do is maybe not that video. But every time I hear an NAR buzzword, yeah. um, I may just in my other videos, just call attention to it. Hey, that's a buzzword. And yeah. and and I'll bet you anything if people knew what the NAR buzzwords really were. They would hear it in their church, too. They would yeah. hear it. Um, the church, the the last brick and mortar church uh, that the flower girl and I went to, um, we uh, we loved it. But I I know because I know people that go there and listen to them talk. It's it's all NAR. It's all NAR. And I was I forgot who I was watching. I think it was Spencer Smith again. He had a he had a lady who was a psychic and she did all kind of psychic work for the government. And then she got saved. And he had her on a live stream and she said, you would be amazed. You would be absolutely astonished at how much the Freemasons are in religion and the, and infiltrated in the 700 club and how much the 700 club has infiltrated smaller churches. Yes. I was floored by that. I'm like, y'all, this is structured. The Antichrist isn't going to, poof anything poof it's there poof the mark of the beast poof one yeah. world it all has to be put in place by us and then he'll take over now he's inspiring people but he's going to take over all our labors and we are rushing to that day as if as if there's a great reward about to happen and really it's going to turn on us just like that yeah. and some of these christians when they when they really figure out this is not right it's going to be a very short time for them to get their stuff straight. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I, I agree. It's time to just, it's time to 
for anybody who isn't already out of that kind of influence mm -hmm. to really, really re-examine re and uh, do some soul searching and compare, you know, compare what everything is being taught to the, to the Bible. And you not, you have to be in the Bible very regularly, even if you know it and you've read it, you know, like you need to be really on a regular um, routine mm -hmm. because it helps you so much to discern and to hear when someone's saying something, you know, like if you, I'm just saying for like people, like I was in a place where I will admit for a few years, I was just kind of like, not, I wasn't, I wasn't reading and studying. I wasn't reading the Bible like regularly. Like I always knew I was, I should. I knew that from the very beginning when I first got saved. I always knew that. Even when my kids were little and I was homeschooling and I was doing all this, I had all these kids. I would feel very, 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 very convicted if I wasn't doing that. And it was real hard to do. And I didn't always do it. But if you get out of that habit, you need to get back into it. Yeah. You just have to because you, it will help you. It will train you to just when you hear something, you'll you'll just go like, what? You know, you'll you'll mm -hmm. start noticing it. Um, and once you do become more familiar with, like you said, like the nuz, the bar, the bar nuz words, <laughs> mm -hmm. the nuz words, um, people, that's really good because you really, it's like another, they have their own lingo. Yes. They have their own, their own vocabulary. And so the new age does too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are very, very in common. You know? Well, I gave this, I gave this analogy uh, in one of my videos, remember, remember when Bill and Hillary came on the scene, as far as, as real powerhouse people, they changed the language with uh, political correctness. They changed the language. Once you change the language, you can change the narrative and you can change the narrative. You can change the way people think. And mm -hmm. that is the exact format, the exact plan that's happening in our church. We're changing everything to your destiny, which is not in the Bible. And there's a shift in the atmosphere, which is not in the oh, word shift is not in the Bible. All these words that are not in the Bible that people are making it their doctrine and they yeah. don't even see what's going on. And it's so pitiful. Yeah, yeah because um, the, uh, the church is definitely borrowing new age terms and the new age sometimes uses a lot of Christianese. Mm -hmm. Like I was reading, that's the thing that's weird. The New Age and the Freemasons, they talk about Christ. Mm -hmm. They talk about things. It's just they don't say, they don't, it's not right. Mm -hmm. But it can be very misleading yeah. and surprising. I was very surprised. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, we're about at closing time. Um, any any final thoughts, closing words you want to? Uh, I know we we could go on. I know I can go on talking to you for another hour or two, but um, I know yeah. Drew is is uh, he has his thing at at eight yeah. p.m. Central Standard. Um, so I want to give people enough time to go do some whatever they need to do and get ready for his show. Any any closing thoughts or statements? Um. Maybe I a guess favorite my, Bible verse or your 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 philosophy of life know. or whatever. Okay. I don't I I don't philosophy of life, that's hard. Like I would have to like I, I did think about it, but I don't really I don't have one that jumps out at me. Mm -hmm. Favorite Bible verse. I would just say right now, um the last few years, I've been liking just John 15, the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. Um but especially about abiding in the vine, you know, that I mean, there's, a, it's a great, can I just read some of it? Yeah. Um, he says, I am the, I am the true vine and my father is the husband and every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth. I'm sorry, purgeth, purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. So he's talking about abiding in him. He's talking about bearing fruit. He's talking about pruning and all this stuff. And then um, and that the ones that don't abide are cast into the fire and are burned. That's not my favorite part, but I think it's a very sobering thing to think about that we need to really be abiding in him and in his truth and in his words. And right here, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit so that ye shall be my disciples. And I feel like if we're abiding in him, 
we're going to love him and love what he loves, and we're going to want what he wants. And his will is, is what we're going to be praying. We're not going to be fo- wasting time on foolishness and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like that are um, just staying close to him, like staying in his word. It's going to help us. It's going to give us strength and stability. It's going to give us wisdom. And it's going to um, it's going to help us even know how to pray so that we're not influenced by like these prophets that are expecting you to believe in all these things, all these, um, I don't know, fantasy things, all this pie in the sky, false hope. Yeah, the, the, the thing that also bothers me so much about the NAR is the you're going to have it on earth now. And you yes. were never promised any of that. The no. reward is waiting for us. It's not here. This is not our home. This place yeah. is a fallen environment. What makes you think you're going to get the full glory of God here when you want it, the way you want it, and when you want it? That's just not yeah. the truth. Yeah. Um, you know, the Bible says that, that there are things that man cannot even imagine that are awaiting. But the NAR says, no, you can have it now. You can have right. the wealth transfer now. You can have a Lamborghini. You can have a house. You can have a hot wife, hot husband, whatever. And everybody's like, yes, yes, give it to me now. And it's 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 sugar-coated rat poison is all yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I appreciate you coming on. I know we could we could talk for much longer. You'll have to come back at some point. Um, I'll get with you about uh, another show if you're if you're up for it. I I am just I am so thankful you came on. I'm I'm reading some of the comments. Um, you have a large, large following. Um, I, I want everybody to, uh, if you look at, uh, if you look at Laura's logo above her, that is her YouTube site. Okay. Uh, magical yeah. mystery church. Hey, sh- share her, her YouTube site, go to your Facebook and, and find out, um, get her, her image and, and start posting it. Um, Laura should be in the 30, 40,000 subscription mark by now. This is she, her information is so um, needed and the way she presents it. I just, I love it. I could watch the videos all day long. Um, Laura, would you like to, uh, we'll both say a little prayer if you'd like to, yes. um, or I'll just close in prayer, whatever you want. Okay. I'll, you're going to pray after me. No, you go first. Okay. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for for Alabama Woodsman, Lord. I thank you for all the people here. I thank you for all the subscribers and all of Alabama's audience, Lord. I thank you so much for bringing us together. I thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to share and to connect with people, Lord. And I just pray that you would bless Alabama and all of his um, all of his audience and anyone from my channel here. Lord, I pray that you would give us all um, wisdom and discernment and love for you and that we would all be able to share and whether it's my videos or Alabama's videos, but you would that we would be able to share the truth of Jesus with other people that we know, that we would be able to help others out there to be prepared for the times to come and for the to avoid um, the deceptions that are out there, that we can keep our focus on you and your word. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just want to thank you for the work that Laura's doing. I want to thank you that um, she is able to dig up th- these things that we need. I know I personally need these this information and these things. I ask that you bless her and her family. I ask that you, you start, you be there and show these people that what we're saying is true and that the only reason we're doing this is for their good. Father, I ask that you visit these false prophets and teachers and you send your Holy Spirit to them and you convict them of their ways, Lord. If they were ever with you, I ask that you draw them back to you, Lord. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Uh, Laura, if you will, hang on. Um, I'll, I'll come right back to you in a private chat for just a minute. Okay. Um, I appreciate you being here. I hope you've had a good time. I did. Thanks. All right. We'll have to uh, we'll get yeah, we'll get together again and do this again. I think it was, I think, I think there's still a lot more I want to know about your thoughts. Yeah. All right. Hang on just a second. All right, folks, that's Laura from Magical Mystery Church. Um, 
I could listen to her talk for hours, just, just picking her brain about all the things she knows that's going on with the NAR, with witchcraft, with new age, with Eastern religions, all of that infiltrating our church. And it's like, we don't even know it's there, but it is there and we need to know about it. So when we see it, we can help others. That's what this is all about. It's really about helping others. You're, you're, you may have your salvation worked out and that's fine, but there's others out there that do not. So I want to ask that you, you do promote her channel. You, you go to her channel, you watch the things she's saying, understand her heart. You've heard in her own words, what her heart is, which is what this channel, my uh, live stream is about folks. That's a video. I hope to see you again on the Alabama Woodsman.